Hi everyone, I am Matteo Collina and today I'm going to talk to you about Fastify. You know, Fastify is a project that I started uh, a few years back with, with Thomas and um, it has been one of the most uh, amazing uh, you know, journey of my life, to be honest. So I hope you would like this, uh, this intro and you would you know, give it a shot and try it out in your next project. So let's start. Um, first of all, uh, uh, take a moment to follow me on Twitter at Matteo Collina. I tweet about a lot of things, so hey, um, mainly, mainly JavaScript. So uh, I also work for a company called Nearform. So if you are interested, please check us out. We are a professional services company based in Ireland, but working worldwide to uh, uh, that can help you in any sort of problems. Anyway, let's get started on uh, on Fastify and why it matters. Uh, so. Uh, Fastify is, you can find everything for uh, related to Fastify on www.fastify.io. It's our main, uh, 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 it's our main domain. You can find all the docs there. It's pretty good. And it's, uh, 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 you know, uh, it should be a lot of docs. As usual, everything can be uh, improved. So please, please, please uh, check it out. And if you see something that it does not, um, you know, that you don't find uh, clear, please open an issue and maybe send out a PR to improve it. Anyway, uh, uh, and this is actually a good segue for uh, uh, the very first important part of, of this talk, which is, um, you know, a genetic principle that is based, uh, that underpins all of OpenJS project, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, specifically Fastify. An open source project is as good as its community is. This is extremely important. So, um, in fact, Fastify, we believe that, you know, building and maintaining a web framework for Node.js is too much of a work for a single individual or even a single company to some extent. And uh, we, uh, uh, you know, we encourage everybody, everybody that is using Fastify, that is finding fi value in Fastify to contribute back. Uh, also, Fastify was born when I met Thomas and I tried to convince him to, to help me, to convince somebody helping in his journey. And, you know, I, I found Thomas and, uh, you know, we started working on this together. So it's, it's quite a nice story. I think I'll talk about it in the latest in at l last year, OpenJS. So check it out. Uh, anyway, Fastify. Fastify is one of the fastest web framework for Node.js. And you can uh, you can just you know require it or import it does work both ways, and you can uh, call it with a logger uh, or other options, and then you can declare your routes and you know async await. You can use async await just return an object it will convert to a JSON. Very simple. Um, now uh, Fastify has been under massive growth in the last year. In the last few years, it has now reached nine hundred thousand uh, uh, downloads per month. Uh, and it's probably on the track to reach a, a million downloads per month at the end of the year. So finger crossed. And uh, it has now uh, it has 15 collaborators working on it, and it has reached version three. And it has a very big ecosystem of 185 plugins. Uh, we are going to ship before soon, so we are going to to storm with a lot of uh, with a lot of news about it. As I said, the core values of Fastify are all about open collaboration and collaboration across multiple individuals. We always welcome first-time contributors. So if you're using Fastify, there's a very good chance that you are uh, that you will be asked a very, very simple question. Would you like to send a pull request to fix your bug, your issue, or implement a new feature? It's always important that you contribute back in this ecosystem. We don't, that's what we do here, okay? It's, uh, it's too complex to build this thing alone, so we ask everybody to contribute back. We also seek open government. We are sort of approach uh, with an open governance uh, in a fashion, which means that uh, we ask if people object, and if not, we are lending them. Typically, uh, if there are ties or things that are uh, too uh, complex or that require that the community is unsure, uh, one of the lead maintainers or creators, whatever, uh, uh, step in and try to uh, uh, fix it, okay, and or maybe try to break the tie essentially, and provide some guidance. And this person is uh, Thomas and myself. Uh, the, the fund, as I said, the key part of Fastify was built, Fastify was a community of two people before it was before any code was committed. So, uh, you know, the, the fact that it's 
a meld of different companies, different people, different individuals working together, it's, it's a key, a fundamental issue, part of Fastify. Um, it's uh, the problem that we have seen. Th why is this? Well, the reason is because we have seen that, especially in other frameworks uh, and other initiatives, that uh, it's very hard to uh, for a single company or person uh, justify the investment that is needed to build and maintain a, a web framework for Node.js. And what we have chosen is to uh, the route that we have chosen is to spread this effort across the companies using it. So, um, you know, the typical request that I, I ask everybody, that we ask everybody is when there is a bug, I said, would you like to send a PR? And remember to add unit tests. So, um, Fastify is pretty unique in that sense, and we create this culture of co-ownership that is a key a fundamental part of the Fastify experience. Um, you can check it out. Um, uh, we also have a nice uh, governance document, so please check it out to see how our community works. Uh, by the way, we just can make we if you contribute to if you contribute to Fastify, it's very likely that you will get the commit bit. So please, you know, if you do sustainable sustainable and valuable contributions. Uh, let's go into tech because you know still Fastify is a web framework, right? For Node.js, so it's it's a tech. We need to talk about tech. Uh, the first principle is about overhead. We don't want to add additional overhead in production. Why? that is not truly possible. So it's aspirational and we want to reduce the overhead uh, that the web framework has. Uh, we want to provide a good developer experience. That's a key fundamental part of it. And uh, it needs to work great for both small and big projects. So it needs to work for a very simple hello world, but also it should also work well for a company that is 100 developers working on several microservices and a big distributed system and so on and so forth. It's not simple to build something to, to, to design a web framework that can uh, easily grow and uh, an increasingly amount of complexity. But probably because of this, we, we wanted to be able to migrate to microservices and serverless and, and back. Uh, it needs to have a, a very good security and more importantly, data validation. Uh, it has a plugin system. Again, we don't believe to scope creep. So to avoid scope creep, we created a plugin system. So if something could be a plugin, it likely should. It needs to be testable, and we do not want to monkey patch core. To be honest, this was one of the parts that one of the critical part, the node core. So this one a critical part that led me to create Fastify in the first place because a lot of the other frameworks actually had a huge focus on monkey patching node core. Also, we want to uh, uh, follow semantic versioning and long term support. So more or less, we ship one new major version per year. And last but not least, uh, HTTP 1.1 spec adherence. So we want to follow the well, HTTP 1.1. So um, one of the uh, very nice bits, uh, one nice thing to chat about is uh, how fast is Fastify, because it's one of you know it's called in this way, and it's uh, uh, I wanted to to clarify that Fastify is uh, fast enough, so it does not provide a, a significant slowdown compared to Node Core. In certain cases, it's actually slightly faster than Node Core because it can avoid certain you know, paths that are not great. Uh, it's probably faster than whatever you are using. And at this level, it's you know, comparable to you just to use Node Core. This is critical because we don't want a significant drop in throughput and performance. So if there is a significant drop in throughput and performance, we are in, you, you, know, you, you don't want your web framework should not be your main bottleneck, right? Uh, it, uh, I, I'll talk a little bit more about later on why this is fast. Why the, it, it, it's, 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 it's fast. So, Fastify is also very much loved by devs, and you know it was part of the latest uh, uh, state of JS, which might not be representative, but is still a good number that you know a few people are uh, loving Fastify. So, pretty good, right? I am pretty pretty happy about uh, about this result. So. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Anyway, uh, um, Fastify is also have another library called Mercurius that you can use on top. It provides uh, support for uh, GraphQL on top of it, and it's also as it's as, as well very fast. Uh, as it said, one of the key part of uh, uh, of Fastify is its plugins, and we have both core plugins and ecosystem plugins. Uh, what is the difference? 
Well, um, the difference is that core plugins are maintained by the Fastify organization. So we typically guarantee to that they work on every new major. So we typically update all of them uh, uh, when we do a Sunver major. Now consider it, we are releasing essentially to do a Sunver major of Fastify, we are probably releasing 40, 45 uh, modules. So it's quite a big deal that typically spans across you know, a couple of days. So when that happens, it's a little bit of a shift. Uh, in in virgin, major versions. Anyway, um, uh, they also tend to solve the problem in the most idiomatic way. So there is a few examples like Fastify to load, Fastify static, and the under pressure module. Um, the projects in the ecosystem are maintained by members of the community. For example, I wrote some of them that are very opinionated and things that I would not want to include in 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 the org. So um, it's uh, you know there are, there are plenty. So hey. Uh, and we have a few, we have 141 of those. So you can just write one, to be honest. There is a good, good guide on the website. So what is the target architecture of a Fastify application? Well, uh, historically, you have we have been deploying Node.js in a, a, with MVC pattern. MVC, however, has a, has a, sig has a significant problem. Uh, you know, once the complexity of your application grows over time, you are either moving, you are either uh, putting the complexity in 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 uh, in the models, the views, or the controllers. So that's quite of a big, uh, quite of a big uh, problem, for me at least, because you know it's it's very hard to uh, to scale. So uh, how can we improve this? Well, um, oh yay, here we go. So um, uh, how can we uh, how can we improve this? Well. What we can do is uh, uh, we can, uh, you know, start structuring our application instead of using the MVC concept, using just horizontal uh, models that are, you know, uh, aligned with the features of your app. So instead of having like these big uh, tree boxes where you need to fit everything, you can have just a few independent modules, as many as the domain of your application are. And this system actually scale very way better in complexity because the moment you start doing this you can uh, you know you can have uh, you have segregated the complexity into and tracking the pieces that you need to reuse in some other module essentially so you you can now track what is the interrelationship between the things um, in fact it's also the stepping stone for moving into a microservice into a microservice architecture Microservices are actually a fundamental part of how we develop system, as well as lambdas and so on. But the key part is that with Fastify, you could essentially move from a, a monolith to a microservice world very easily because it's all built on the console of plugins. So you will see that in a moment, but it's like super easy. So, uh, uh, so let's go a little bit uh, in depth. So uh, Fastify is built on uh, on various levels. So at the, at the bottom of it, we have two libraries, Avio, which is the loader of Fastify, and provide, it also provides the plugin system, and Pino, which is the fastest logger for Node.js. I'm not going to talk about Pino. So, you know, go Google it up, Pino logger Node.js or something. There's a lot of talks. One of my favorite one is the cost of plugin. It has been around for a while. It has now reached version 6, and it's going to have version 7. We're talking a little bit about it later, maybe. Anyway, the Avio, which is the uh, the loader, it's what, you know, load the plugin system. And it provides the extensibility that is needed uh, by, by your app. Uh, uh, Avio guarantees us to have the plugin system, the hook system, and the decorators. So it's essentially provide the basics in which all these other features are built upon. On top of that, we have like uh, the router, which is find my way, uh, AJV, which is the validation validator, and fastjson signify, which is the signalizer. We'll talk about those in a second. Um, so the plugin system. This is a key part of Fastify. With the plugin system, you have an entry point. At the top, at the very top, and uh, it's uh, then the entry point can you know load plugins, and plugins can load other plugins re-enter in a uh, re-entrant way. Now each one of those plugins creates a, an encapsulation context. So essentially, whatever they do, it won't influence it. It won't influence like sibling plugins or the descendants. This is critical because then we can say, for example, we can pack an app and reuse it. We'll see how to do that. Um, in fact, when if I want to expose a functionality from one plugin to the other, I can use the concept of decoration. So I can decorate the request, response, or the server 
to expose some uh, things to the my de descendant plugins. Now this is really nice because you know it's a, a, a simple way of providing dependency injection or I don't know inversion of control if you want to call it whatever. So it's actually pretty nice. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, you can also break the encapsula encapsulation if you want because you can use a, an utility called Fastify plugin so that you can actually may uh, uh, expose. Uh, the decoration to your parent as well as the, and the, and your siblings. This allows us to build I don't know reusable modules. So we can use this utility to um, build reusable modules. The request lifecycle of Fastify is different than the one of Express, for example. With uh, other stuff, with other Express or Coa, you have middlewares that are run everywhere. With Fastify, you have a predefined lifecycle that clearly defines that you can clearly use to specify when things are run. And this is key because in this way we can actually uh, you know, avoid monkey patching node core. So um, you, we have all sorts of hooks. So typically the most important ones are the on-request hook. That's the first one that is executed. Uh, we have pre-handler, which is executed before the user handler. And then we, an, we have on-send, which is uh, executed before uh, uh, sending the actual response out. Uh, we also provide a recommended project structure, which provides an app.js file that contains your app, a plugins folder for reusable behavior, a routes folder for uh, all your routes with a nested pattern. We'll see how to do that. And then a test folder with, with your code. Um, Fastify provides this concept of encapsulation, as we have seen. Now, with Fastify, you've seen the target architecture uh, on the left. And, you know, it's... Uh, um, let me actually put it. Let me actually put it big. Here you go. Uh, so it's uh, with Fastify. You have you can see that you have your target architecture on the on the left, and this architecture provides you. Uh, you know, you tells you to structure your system in modules. Now you can actually port this to Fastify very easily because you can have you know your major application that is composed uh, your major app that is composed of three sub apps or four or five or how many you want which have their own plugins and dependencies and everything. So it's completely, they are completely separated between themselves. It's pretty neat. Um, so uh, on, because of all of this stuff, you can also use Fastify to fully embed an Express app. So, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, as I said, logging, it's uh, uh, one of the uh, key part of Fastify and uh, you can just use uh, Pino. So it's probably the fastest logger for, for Node.js. So take a look at, at the uh, take a look at Pino. Uh, it, it's great. So it's we are version on version seven. How do you use it? Well, you just call logger.info. It's pretty neat as everything you will you will use in the past. Um, uh, some more important bits. Uh, Fastify provide out of the box serialization. So it allows you to, serial, to specify the type, the schema of the object going out. This is pretty important because then we can create a faster than JSON.stringify method function that uh, you know, can give you a nice speed bump. Uh, uh, we also have written this utility called Fluent JSON Schema to help you writing JSON Schema in a nicer syntax. I like it a lot. I never use JSON Schema, by the way. Uh, we also use uh, AJV, which is, uh, um, uh, and by the way, this is the plugin system syntax, so you need to export a function with uh, app and apps. And uh, AJV is uh, uh, the one of the fastest validators for Node.js, so uh, it's pretty great also for embedding. So that's why we use it. And hey, it's also another uh, OpenJS uh, project. So uh, testing, uh, Fastify embed an inject method for fast testing. It's really fast, even this method. And um, in fact, it, that method is so fast that it adds the basis of the uh, integration for AWS Lambda. So you can, with this utility, AWS Lambda Fastify, you can just create a very simple proxy for your uh, Fastify app, which is essentially just the, the app as you would normally use. And it just works. It's pretty neat. And it's really fast. Like this is actually way better than uh, embedding an Express app inside Lambda. So you can check it out. Uh, you can use the close method for uh, uh, um, graceful shutdown uh, in normal node app in case you want to do. Uh, okay, um, so uh, I just want to thank you for your time before we go into the, uh, we do a little bit of a live coding example.
and see how it is. So I'm going to switch to my um, uh, to my terminal that you can all see. So um, you know we can start developing uh, things on Fastify. So we can do eapp.js and we can do uh, import Fastify from uh, Fastify. And what we do is that we do const app, uh, we do fastify, okay, and then we do app.listen3000, uh, here we go. And, you know, because I am fancy, I'm going to bring an await here to demonstrate top level await of Node.js. So we now do, we can do oh, node app, and then I can curl it, and we are curling it, and you see it's, it's just not found. Um, so, hey, not super nice, right? But we can add a route. And we add a route and a function rec. Well, I don't need anything here, so I'm just going to return hello world. Running my app, as you see now, it's returning hello world. Cool. Oh, I can also see that if there are all the HTTP headers that I would expect, and they are all there. Okay, so pretty nice. Okay. Um, uh, what do we do next? Well, this app is not really, really reusable. So what we want to do is uh, uh, we want to make uh, uh, well, this is refresh. Hey. Okay. Let's, let's do this. Okay, so we want to create a, a, another server, another file called server.js. Now, I want to split my app because, for example, I want to build them and reuse them for, for, for unit tests. So what I do in app is that I do export a default uh, async function. And I typically do this. And do return app. Then I move this into server. And here I do import build from app.js. And then I do const app await build. Okay, so let's see if no, node app, it does nothing now. So if I do node server instead, and then I curl. It's still working as, as expected. Cool. Okay. Pretty neat. Um, so this is actually pretty nice. Um, I can also use, for example, passing some opts here and, you know, include them here. Um, and then in server, I can say, for example, uh, logger true. So I can do node server and then I can curl. I didn't do something here. So build app. Uh, did I say this? I probably didn't. Okay, so now you see it's printed something and we see some stuff being printed out. This is new light and limited JSON. If I am uh, 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 in, uh, if, if I want uh, some nicer output for development, I can use Pino Pretty. And as you can see, I can see the request coming in and the uh, request that is completed out. And we can see some usual things about response time and so on and so forth. So here we go. Pretty neat. Uh, cool. Okay. So this is uh, uh, some, some, some good example. However, this is not really scalable as we saw. So we can use the routes. Uh, we can create a routes folder. And in routes, I can uh, uh, create a, a load.js. In a load.js, what I am doing is that I'm going to copy this. And here I'm doing to export default uh, uh, async function app opts and, and then I'm going to pass this in and then in my app.js I am just going to uh, app.register oh I need a tiny utility because otherwise it won't work on Windows so this is for dealing with ESM. So it's called DSM. And I'm just going to do join um, uh, import 
but I want to import join import meta URL the current file well I can I will don't need this right now so I can just do the routes uh, and hello dot JS okay then I cancel this and see if it works okay so it, it it did load and then it it's still working cool okay so now um, one of the things that i want to use is instead i don't want to load all the files manually so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use uh, auto load the auto load module so uh called uh, pastify auto load and i'm going to use this with this utility called dsm and um, the reason for this it's because Unfortunately, uh, uh, you know, in ESM, you don't have underscore underscore DIN name or underscore underscore file name. So you need a little bit, uh, you need to work with uh, file URLs and uh, that's a bit convoluted. So I don't really, I make mistakes all the time, especially stuff that doesn't work on Windows. So uh, I, I tend to prefer to use my utility that has the thing called that. So you do, you specify your directory and then you say import meta URL, which is the current file and you put uh, uh, and then you say routes so you basically you tell load load everything that is defined into that folder so you will then you know run this and uh, then i can uh, curl it as you can see it still worked as expected as before pretty pretty nice uh, pretty pretty nice indeed um cool folks oh one of the nicest things that i can actually create a folder nested structure so I can say a nested uh, and then say uh, route.js and then I can copy this and put it in here and says hello nested. Note that I still use slash here to define this, that the pattern is defined in the, in the, in the folder. Um, and so let's see if, if I can launch this stuff. So this is still working. Okay, cool. And then if I do slash nested, it's still, it, it goes into the nested folder. Um, so yeah, uh, I just wanted to say, to conclude to conclude this by, uh, 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 by saying thank you. And uh, uh, if you have any question, please reach out to me at Matteo Colina on Twitter or via email. There is also an at Fastify.js uh, account. So um thank you uh, thank you very much and uh bye bye